We'll wait another minute or so. Okay. I haven't yet. Oh, no. okay. Now, when was that that I sent it to you? All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome, everybody, um, in person and via Zoom. Um, so I just want to kind of go through a little bit of an agenda of what we're going to talk about today. And so the first thing we're going to do is figure out who this guy is and why he's teaching a P&L class. So I'll tell you a little about myself. Uh, we're then going to get into just talking about what a P&L statement is and why you need one. And we're going to take a look at the, uh, the P&L tutorial that I put together that, to go along with the PL workbook. And uh, I've tried to, you know, make this as simple as possible, um, regardless of your uh, comfort level with, with Excel. So there's a lot of uh, help text and, uh, and things to help you to guide you through the workbook itself. Then we're actually going to dive into the workbook and go through how to set that up and uh, how you can put that to work for yourself in your business. And then we'll talk about some takeaways and ahas at the end of the class. So to start with, for those that don't know me, my name is Tom Wright and I'm an agent here in the Burnsville Market Center. And I'm also a, uh, a member of the ALC. Um, prior to 
getting into real estate. I spent a little over 20 years in the call center industry. Uh, we had about 25 call center locations around the country and in Canada. I was responsible for overseeing anywhere from six to eight of those locations at any one time. One of the tools that, that we utilized in the call center when I'd go visit the different uh, locations was a P&L statement. And with that, <clears throat> we'd be able to see the profitability of each, each center and make adjustments as needed um, to increase their profitability. So after um, the company was, uh, went through an acquisition, uh, they were going through some changes. I wasn't real excited about how it was affecting me in my role. And uh, so I was persuaded by my wife as well as uh, Jill McNamee, a good friend of mine who's in the uh, Hudson, Wisconsin office, uh, to go get my license, which I did. And I continued to do my full-time job with the call center and do um, real estate part-time, and that was in uh, 2015. Uh, after some changes kept occurring, I just got increasingly frustrated and decided to dive in full-time into real estate. Uh, that was in 2017. Uh, this year, you know, my business has really started to take off, and I was proud to be asked to be on the ALC, and my initiative in uh, working to help the market center, help the agents, is on financials, which is why I put together this, this P&L workbook to assist everybody in running and managing their business. And also, I'm not too bad with Excel. So if you do have any Excel-related questions, don't hesitate to, to reach out to me at any time. All right, so what is a P&L statement? So basically, it's a, it's a tool that helps you analyze your business. And uh, it summarizes your revenues, costs, cost of sales, expenses, and uh, gives you the ability to um, make adjustments as needed. Like, you know, with this year, it, it's been very strange with COVID. And from the start, Gary Keller has, has preached about, you know, look at your financials, analyze your expenses, get rid of or reduce anything that's not absolutely necessary. So you want to protect yourself, you want to increase your, your net profit as much as you can by reducing those expenses. And a, a P&L statement gives you the ability to do that, to look at your business in detail and see where you're spending money and then determine where you can cut back. So th this is a, is a statement here actually from Gary Keller, uh, that was in the MREA book. Uh, there's a natural rhythm, monthly rhythm to business, which demands that you examine your books at least once each month. I'll go as far as to recommend you keep a monthly budget, but address it on a weekly basis. Why? Because leading with revenue and red light, green light, require you to stay in touch with your spending. And, uh, I don't know if anybody was in the uh, Spark class yesterday, but you know this was one of the things we talked about was was leading with revenue, and uh, <coughs> when you are setting your goals, you you start with profit. So you set your profit goal for the year, and then you kind of reverse engineer that to determine what activities. Um, you need to uh, have in place to achieve those goals. All right. 
Let's jump into our tutorial. Let's see. So the uh, tutorial is a basically an instruction guide to help you through um, navigating the, the P&L workflow. So again, I've tried to simplify this as much as possible to uh, make it easy for everyone to understand how the, the Excel workbook functions. Um, there's help text in here to, uh, to help you with cutting and pasting and entering data. So the workbook itself is set up in uh, multiple tabs. And I've color coded the tabs so that if you see a green tab, that's a tab where you can enter data, enter your information. If it's a black tab, it's for informational purposes or reporting. The uh, first tab we're going to take a look at once we get into the workbook is the, the monthly budget. And several of the tabs that have the, the P&L statements, the, um, uh, the monthly budget, have some functionality in there that allow you to uh, look at as much information or as little information as you need to. On the left side of the spreadsheets, you're going to see this plus and minus sign uh, at the top of the spreadsheet. And this, by clicking on the plus sign, you're going to expand the, uh, the cells underneath it to be able to view all of the, uh, the categories. In addition, there's a, a number one and a number two at the top of that column where the plus and minus signs are. And those allow you to either expand all of the categories or contract all of the categories. And we'll, we'll show you that once we get into the spreadsheet here. But again, this is something that's uh, just a good reference for you. Um, if you have any questions once you start working on the uh, on the PNL spreadsheet, so the workbook itself, um, the spreadsheet will work with uh, if you have a desktop version of Excel or if you're using uh, Office 365. You can open it in Google Form or Google Sheets. However, much of the functionality is going to be uh, unavailable to you. So I definitely recommend either the desktop version or Office 365. And one of the things you're going to see when you first open it up is um, you will need to, oops, you will need to enable macros um, either on the desktop version or in Office 365. Uh, there's macros embedded into the spreadsheet that allow for a lot of this functionality I built in. So again, I'm not sure if you can see the, the bottom of the screen with the, uh, the tabs here. Let's see if I can get this out of the way a little bit. All right. So our first tab is monthly budget. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have actually created a budget for your business or your, your personal expenses, but I highly recommend you doing so. It takes a little bit of time to set it up to get the numbers plugged in, but uh, I guarantee once you do it, you'll, you'll be very glad that you did. Um, and another tab that I've incorporated into the book is a way to actually look at your budgeted P&L versus your actual P&L. So you can see how you're doing. If you're up, down, 
the property is where it needs to be. But where we're going to start is with the chart of accounts. And for anybody who has uh, read MREA, you might recognize this from, uh, from the book. Uh, but chart of accounts is basically a way to categorize all of your income and expenses. Uh, it's something that your accountant, um, CPA will be using to, uh, to do your tax returns. So with the chart of accounts, there are uh, main categories such as total income. And with total income, it's given a, a, uh, a chart of accounts number. In this instance, it's 41,000. Well, under that main category of, of income are subcategories. So you break down the types of income that you have, whether it's listing income, sales income from the buyer side, referral income or leasing income. And when we look at the, uh, the P&L statement, we're going to be able to see those numbers and how they correspond to the different categories, whether it's income, cost of sales, expenses, et cetera. So does anybody have any questions first about the chart of accounts and how that's used? All right. Well, the chart of accounts tab again is more for reference purposes. It's a lot of information to have to look through, but I did wanna give a, a full view of it in, uh, in one piece of the workbook. When you begin to enter data into the, uh, the workbook, what I've done is set it up so that only the chart of accounts that apply to the category that we're entering are what are going to be visible to you on that sheet. So for example, when we're entering our expenses, only the chart of accounts that apply to expenses are going to be listed here. So it's a, a less daunting list of, uh, of accounts that you have to look through. All right, so as far as getting started, it, it all begins with the setting up your monthly budget. And so again, I've tried to make it as, as easy to use as possible. So wherever you see, um, <laughs> The areas shaded in green, those are the areas where you can enter data. Uh, if it's not shaded in green, it likely has a, a formula built into it that's going to add up all of your entries that you make here. So going through and, uh, you know, just figuring out, you know, how many transactions, what is my transaction goal for the year? and get your starting point and then plug in your numbers for your listing income, your buyer income, <laughs> referral income, et cetera. And do this for every month of the year. Same thing with uh, cost of sales. And can anybody give me a definition of what the cost of sales is or what goes into the cost of sales. Nineteen five. Yes, that's part of it. Yes. Three thousand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the cost of sales is is what you pay to the market seller. Um, so with our our company dollar cap at nineteen five. That's part of your cost of sales, as well as our royalty, which is capped at 3,000. 
a good way to look at it is if you don't have a transaction, if you don't have a closing, you don't have cost of sales. Um, as far as uh, maybe I, I do a, uh, you know, pay the photographer to take pictures for a listing. That's going to be categorized as an expense, not a cost of sale, because even if you don't close on that listing, you're still paying for that photography. So just remember, no closing, no cost of sales. All right, then when we get down to expenses, um, you know, be as detailed as you can. Um, you're only going to benefit from, you know, how accurate your, your budgeting really is. You know, look back at previous years. If you are a new agent, talk to other agents and kind of get an idea of, you know, what, what are their expenses and how um, is that going to compare to your new business? All right, when we get down to the bottom, we also have some below the line income that we're going to be categorizing. And that's going to be profit share. So if you have uh, anybody in your profit share tree and you're getting that, uh, that check every month, your income for, from profit share is going to be reported below the line. And then down here, you can change whatever your anticipated tax liability is going to be. And I recommend talking to your uh, accountant CPA to determine what that number is for you. So if your anticipated tax liability is going to be, let's say 30%, we can just change that number, maybe. Oh, we're not able to edit. Oh, that was a scary screen. <laughs> oh, that should have been black. <laughs> okay. So now we should be able to, to edit our worksheet here. So if we if we look at uh, uh, row ninety seven. We've got tax numbers plugged in here. This is based on 25% tax liability. If we change that to 30, those numbers adjust based on whatever our entry is for our tax liability. All right. So now that we've got our annual budget set up, now we can get into actually entering our data um, our actual expenses and income. So if we go over to the itemized expenses tab, you can enter the data in manually, or if you're using a business checking account, business credit card, anything like that, you can download that information and plug it right in, into the spreadsheet. So for example, I've got uh, some data here that we'll pull in. Let's go to expenses. And so this is information that I have exported from a, uh, a business checking account. And so with virtually any bank account, any credit card, you should be able to do an export to uh, like a CSV file, which is basically an Excel file. Once you get that raw data, you can then take and copy this. And go back to our budget and then we can plug that information in here. Plug that information in here. Okay. 
this version isn't allowing me to paste. So let's see what we got in here. All right, technical difficulties. All right, we may have to make a change here. Let me get over to All right, hopefully everyone can see the, uh, the screen now. <clears throat> and we'll go back to our itemized expenses. And get the data that we need to copy and paste. Copy again. Okay, I apologize for this. Okay, so now we've got our, our expenses plugged in. And this one I happen to have already plugged in the chart of accounts numbers. And uh, if you're doing an export from the checking account from the credit card, these chart of account numbers in column A are not going to be there. And so you will have to assign those based on the chart of accounts list on the right-hand side. So for instance, if I'm looking for, um, you know, what the category or the chart of accounts number is for, you know, getting gas for my car, there's a function in Excel that we can use to find that information quickly, if you use control F, it's a find feature. And if I just type in what I'm looking for here, we're looking for gas and click on find next, it takes me right to the category. And so I know I need to use account number 66300. And so that's what I would plug in over here under the chart of accounts. So once this data is entered and the chart of accounts numbers are plugged in, if we go over to the, the P&L statement, the P&L monthly, we're now going to see those expenses we just put in there showing up in our expenses category. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can expand and contract all of these categories we click on the number two, they're now expanded and now we can see the detail of 
each of these expense categories. So if we go down to automobile, we see that our gas expense is plugged in for January and February. Now, we'll jump over to cost of sales. And again, no closing, no cost of sales. The um, cost of sales, again, is commissions or uh, royalties paid to the uh, to Keller Williams as well as our company dollar tax. So again, I'll grab some uh, too many mice here to choose from. We'll go over to our sample data. We'll grab our cost of sales information. Paste that into our, our sheet. And then go back to our P&L statement. So now our cost of sales we show what the uh, commissions paid to the office are, the royalties, and those are plugged in as well. Now we need to add our, our income, our commission checks. We'll grab that information and plug that into our Revenue uh, tab. Instead of pasting it. Now our PL is starting to look more complete. We've got our, our income entered, we've got our cost of sales entered and we've got our expenses entered. And so now we can look at the bottom line and see what our, um, our profit is for each month. We can also look at this on an annual basis which is what your accountant is likely wanting to see. They're typically not gonna be concerned with your month to month unless they are actually keeping your books. But if you're using your accountant or CPA to um, basically just do your taxes every year, then they're gonna to wanna to see an annualized P&L. So again, this works the same way, um, just shows the annual amounts but you can expand these categories as well. And again, click on the one to contract all of them. Um, when I talked earlier, when we were talking about creating your budget and being able to compare your budget versus your actual expenses. That's when you would go to the, the variance or budget versus actual tab. And here you can look at your budgeted uh, P&L versus your actual P&L on a month to month basis. So you just select the month that you wanna review On the left side, you're going to see what your actual budget is, or your actual P&L, I should say. And on the right side is your budget that you created. Again, to make it easy to determine visually, anything in green is good. Good, that means you're, you're exceeding budget. If it's red, well, you need to do a little work. Maybe you need to cut some expenses somewhere. But again, this is where you can, you can really dig into your, uh, your P&L and analyze what you are spending 
on your business? And is it something that, you know, maybe you can either cut down on or cut out completely? And so this is a great way to look at, uh, you know, whether or not you're, you're on track to achieve your, your profit goal. So wouldn't we all like to be 969% over budget on profit? All right, and so I've incorporated uh, a lot of things from MREA, and one is the, the budget model. And so again, try to make it visual so you can see, you know, where you're at in your business and can actually compare that with the budget model from MREA. So the best practices model just gives uh, categories of your, your gross commission income, your GCI. So select the one that most closely represents where you're at in your business. And for instance, if we look at uh, you know, a GCI of 150,000, according to MREA best practices, these are the percentages that we should be seeing or trying to adhere to in our business. Cost of sales at 13% of GCI, expenses at 38% of GCI, resulting in a net income or a profit of 49%. And so to be able to see where you're at with your P&L, uh, when you click on this refresh chart button, you're now going to see percentages for each category, for your revenue, your expenses, and your cost of sales. And so we can now see where we're at versus the MREA models. Can we go back to that before we go Okay, so like, what's the difference between the gross profit and the net income? Gross profit is that the number after cost of sales. Okay. And then from there you take your expenses and then Right, right. And that's a, a, a great question, by the way. And if we go back to our, uh, our P&L, I'll just look at the annual one. This gross profit right here, that's your 1099. So, are there any questions so far? Anything we, that anybody wants to go over again? Does anybody feel intimidated by Excel? I'm not sure where our, uh, can't see our, screen for Zoom here to see if there's any questions there. So you and I discussed previously that there are multiple streams of income. I've got my real estate sales and I've got another business. Mm -hmm. I should do two completely separate spreadsheets for each of these, right? Because they have different budgets, different charts of account. More than likely because um, you're probably doing separate returns mm -hmm. on these businesses. So yes, yes each one. Easier. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. So yes, you would probably want to have a separate P&L for each business entity. Okay. Is anyone currently using a P&L? <laughs> yeah, I know it, it seems a little intimidating, but I, I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Um, 
reach out to me if you have any questions. Reach out to other agents in the office that are, are using a PL. Um, but definitely ask for, for help, ask questions. Um, let's see, let's go over here. So as far as takeaways from the class, um, if you're not using a P&L or some sort of uh, tracking system for your finances and income, um, start using one right now. Um, it's definitely hugely important for your business. Get in the habit of entering your data on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. Uh, one thing I can tell you is the longer you go between entries, the more overwhelming it, it can seem. So if you're staying on top of it, um, it's not quite as daunting a task. And plus, it's something you should be doing anyway, you know, reviewing your P&L. Do you do this weekly or monthly? Or? Worst case, I do it bi-weekly. Okay. But, uh, you know, the, the busier you get, the more expenses you have, the more frequently you're probably going to want to do it. So you're like, so you're taking your bank statements and credit card statements and exporting them into that CD file, and then your packages do your thing. Right, your thing. right. Okay. And... I have actually set the, and I'll show you that in a second. I've, I've created a tab in the workbook because a lot of people use QuickBooks. So all of this information for your PL statement is already getting entered into, into QuickBooks. So why have to reinvent the wheel and re enter all this information in, into this PL statement? So I created a tab that allows you to export the data from QuickBooks into here to transfer it to the PL and statement. By using QuickBooks, does that mean they can't get your PL statement from QuickBooks? They can. If and um, one thing you can do with, with QuickBooks is you can incorporate the MREA chart of accounts. Um, I don't know that a lot of people have done that. So, uh, depends on what, uh, what type of accounting or charting they have set up in, in QuickBooks. But the, uh, the MREA chart of account is set up specifically for real estate, not specifically for Keller Williams, but specifically for real estate. And as I mentioned, the longer you go between doing entries, the more overwhelming it becomes. And review your, your P&L, your profitability on a regular basis um, and look where you can make adjustments you know, before it's too late in the year. And a big thing is be profitable. And let me just go back to the uh, the worksheet and go over to the QuickBooks export. <clears throat> so with this again, I've tried to make it as explanatory as possible, simple as possible to basically walk you through how to uh, put this data in there. So I have a sample export from a, a QuickBooks account that we will plug in and I can show you how the data is uh, converted so that it works with the P&L workbook. So we paste our data here. And the reason I use this specific paste option the one that shows the one, two, three on it is because it, 
it pastes only the values that we've copied. We don't need um, any of the formatting, you know, if there's any color or anything like that. So it's just a, a cleaner paste when we pull that data over. So once I paste this in, it automatically transforms the data into the format that, that we need for the PL workbook. So then we can just take this data and copy that, go over to our itemized expenses, go to the first blank line. And in column B, we're going to right click. And again, we're going to paste using one, two, three. And now the only thing we have to do is categorize each of these expenses that we've just pulled in. And then they will get plugged into the, uh, the PL statement. So I've tried to eliminate as much double entry as possible for anyone who's using QuickBooks. And if, well, one other thing I do want to point out is if you don't already have it set up, definitely get a business checking account, set up a business savings account or money market account, whatever works for you, and keep your business um, financials separate from your personal financials. Don't use your personal credit card or check card to pay for business expenses because then you're going to have to sort through all of your personal and business stuff before you even start to enter this data. Um, it's much cleaner to keep them separate and it's going to be just so much easier to manage for you. If anybody is interested in um, in having the workbook customized so that you could utilize it with, you know, exports from the bank or credit card that you use, just come talk to me, let me know, and I can set that up for you. So that way you can just export the data from your checking or credit card account, plug it in here, it'll automatically transfer it to the format needed for this workbook and save you a lot of manual entry. And uh, then the last thing on, uh, on this tab is, you know, once you're done, you know, pasting the data in and then copying, pasting over to your expense sheet, you can just click the clear data tab and now you're ready to import your next uh, set of expenses next month or next week. All right. Well, I believe uh, Taylor is going to upload um, copies of the, the workbook and tutorial that you can download them from the, the Facebook work, workbook or work group. And don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Um, if you need help getting things set up, be more than happy to help you. I saw your class last time, but I was on Zoom, and I couldn't, I couldn't see the screen, so everything was going over. So oh. I made sure I was muted in. So now I'm like, oh, that's that it. Yeah. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. Well, thank you, everybody. And hopefully this was, was beneficial and can help you Manage your business. Yes. Thank you. Maybe when you look at my spreadsheet, um, I had started entering a couple of the income items. Actually, I copied them over from that other version. Uh huh. And they're not showing up. Okay. Let me get out of this here. 